let's talk about a calorimetry activity that you might have done in lab. Here's how it works. You want to find out how many calories of heat energy are in a food sample, say like a potato chip. So what you do is you take that potato chip and you light it on fire and you put it under a container of water. This is going to cause the water to heat up and so you measure how much the temperature rises and then you take that and a bunch of other numbers and plug them into this equation, crank through the math, and you get an answer for how many calories of heat energy were in the food to begin with. So in these videos, we're going to talk about calorimetry. In the first video, we're going to focus on the experiment part of it. We're going to talk about the background and a little bit of chemistry so you can understand what's actually going on. Then in the second video, we'll go step by step through all the calculations that you might have to do when solving these sort of calorimetry problems. So let's get started with the explanation. First, we'll talk a little bit about what calories are and why they're important. So whenever we start talking about calorimetry, so many people have this question, and it's one that I had too when I was first learning this stuff. They say, wait, wait, wait. I thought calories were something in food that you wanted to avoid when you were dieting. What in the world do calories have to do with heat energy and burning stuff? This is such a good question because it's true. Calories are something that's in food, and uh, if you eat too many calories, it can cause you to gain weight. But really, calories are just a measure of how much energy is in something. Okay? So, let's say we have a slice of bread. It has 150 calories in it. If you eat this bread, it will release those 150 calories, and then your body can use them. So I can eat the bread, and now my body has 150 calories of energy, and it can use this energy to move my muscles, make my brain work, do all the sort of stuff that bodies need energy to do, okay? But that's not the only thing that I can do with 150 calories of energy in bread. I could also release these calories by taking a match and lighting the bread on fire. And in that case, this 150 calories will be released as heat and it will warm up the air that's around that bread. So here's the point. There's energy in the bread in calories and you can use it for a variety of things. I can burn it and get 150 calories out in heat to warm up like a room or I can eat it and get 150 calories of energy for my body. But the amount of calories is the same no matter how I choose to spend it. So if I want to measure how much energy in calories is in the bread, all I have to do is burn it and measure the amount of heat that's released into the air. I take that number and it's the same number that I would get released in my body if I were to eat it. Now let's talk about the experiment. So to find out how many calories of heat energy are in the potato chip, we can light it on fire. This is going to cause it to release heat and the heat is going to go into the water that's in the container above the potato chip. Okay? That is going to cause the temperature of the water to increase as the heat moves into it. Here's my thermometer. The, uh, the temperature rises, and eventually all the heat energy is going to be used up in this potato chip, and I'm going to be left with nothing but a little shriveled bunch of ashes. Okay, So this is what happens. Now, the potato chip, as it burns, is releasing heat out into the environment. So that means that this reaction is exothermic for the potato chip. Heat is moving out. But on the other hand, heat is moving into the water, causing its temperature to rise. So that means that from the water's point of view, this is an endothermic process. Okay, so what's going on here? We want to measure the amount of heat energy in the potato chip. So why the water? Why the burning? What's, what's going on here? Well, here's the thing. You can't measure heat energy in something when it's just sitting there, okay? The only way to measure heat energy is to make it move from one thing to another, and then you can measure it, okay? Here's an example. Let's say we have a guy named Chip, and we want to know how much money he has, but we can't look at his bank accounts, we can't check his wallet, we can't do anything. The only thing we can do is we can take Chip and we can make him give all of his money to another guy, 
by the name of Water. Okay? So Chip transfers all of his money to Water, and then we look at Water's bank account, and we see that Water's bank account went up by $50,000. Aha! Uh -huh. There's our answer. By looking at how much Water's bank account went up, we know how much Chip gave Water, and since Chip gave Water everything he had, we know that Chip originally had $50,000. So that is exactly what's going on here. By burning the potato chip, we make it give up all of its heat energy, just like Chip has to give up all of his money, and all of the heat energy goes into the water, raising its temperature. Okay, So we can say here that all of the heat released by the potato chip is absorbed by the water, so it goes into the water. Now, in order to find out how much heat was released, all we have to do is determine how much heat the water absorbed. Solving for how much heat the water absorbed will tell us how much heat the potato chip lost. Because just to go through this one more time, the amount of heat that the water absorbed we're assuming is the same that the potato chip released. And since we're burning this potato chip to a tiny little crisp, we're imagining that it is releasing all the heat it has. So all the heat from the potato chip gets given up, it goes into the water, it's absorbed by the water, and then we measure how much heat the water absorbs. It tells us how much was originally in the potato chip. Okay? So this is uh, the broad picture of what's actually going on here. Now, since our goal is to determine how much heat the water absorbed, let's look at how we can actually figure this out by, uh, by measuring some stuff and doing a little math.